Hey, everybody, diving deep into the world of cybersecurity today with a real innovator and thought leader, uh, Pinar from Timus Networks. How are you? Thanks so much, Evan, for having me. I'm well, thank you. Well, thanks for joining. Really intrigued by your mission at Timus. And uh, let's start a little bit about your background and biography. Really, you worked for some amazing companies out there over the years from Ericsson and Qualcomm, many others. But how did you get into the cybersecurity space? What was um, most interesting or appealing to you and the team? Uh, yeah, sure. So first of all, my accent comes from uh, from originally being uh, from Turkey. I was born and raised in Istanbul. My background is actually in electrical engineering. I went to college for electrical engineering, and then I came to the U.S. Uh, for grad school. And uh, I, my journey in the t tech sector actually started as a systems engineer. Uh, you know, mm. I was at Qualcomm uh, in their R&D department for a while, and slowly. You know, I, I moved into the business side and, you know, I've done sales, business development uh, in all kinds of uh, products and solutions and, and majority software, almost all uh, software. So six years ago, I started getting more into cybersecurity, uh, first with Haya, uh, another uh, startup, Seattle-based startup. I was running the uh, North American business there uh, for uh, large partners. So it Haya does voice security. And then slowly I moved into uh, Lookout, which was more mobile security. It's another startup, uh, later stage startup. It's actually HQ in Boston. And now with Timus, it's uh, cloud-based security of the uh, of the network. Oh, what a fantastic uh, background. And, and talk about the security landscape these days, very complicated, diverse many different approaches. What, how do you fit on this landscape? What's your particular vision? Yeah, you know, from, from our side, uh, you know, when you say cybersecurity, it just sounds like one thing, right? And then you go to a mm. cybersecurity conference and there are like millions other, uh, you know, there's so many companies that's focused on one aspect of cybersecurity because it's really... Uh, a pretty large uh, umbrella of topics. And, and, mm. and with the current risk economy and with the current threats and how easy for bad actors to actually uh, get into the network or your devices and phishing and so on, there are so many things that need uh, protection. How we fit into it is, uh, so we do network security, meaning... Our mission, uh, Evan, is to protect employee, uh, to protect the company uh, from uh, bad actors and data breaches wherever their employees are working from. So, in this uh, current, uh, you know, uh, current workforce, as you know, the modern workforce has become really hybrid. So, you know, you have employees working from home, but also from Mallorca from Latin America, from wherever. And these people, you know, when they're accessing uh, on, on their day-to-day -day lives, when they're working, we cannot expect them to be security at the top of their mind 24 seven, because it's not fair to them, right? Their job is to be produ productive. So how can the uh, organizations make sure that they are secure while being productive without them having to think proactively about security all the time. And don't get me wrong, of course, employees have to be cognizant of security, but the more we can automate and the more we can make sure that they can uh, connect uh, the company resources securely, uh, even when they are remote, uh, the better. And that's that. That's really our job. The To summarize, what Timus provides is secure, always on connectivity to company resources regardless of the device the employee is using or wherever they're accessing from. When you open your laptop, we automatically create an encrypted tunnel to the company resources, be it on-premise uh, servers, firewalls, or business SaaS apps or cloud servers. We make sure that data is encrypted and secure. Uh, the connective connection is secure. Well, it's a fantastic approach and it leverages frameworks like Zero Trust and SASE. Maybe for the audience here, explain the importance of Zero Trust and SASE as more and more yeah. businesses, particularly SMEs, move to the cloud and SaaS. 
uh, 100%. So uh, Timus really focuses on the small, small to mid-sized enterprises versus the very large scale enterprises. Uh, you know, uh, at the at the uh, higher end, you have a lot of uh, companies that do similar to what we've done, but in a much more complicated manner, like it takes much longer to deploy, lots of integrations and so on. But for the small, medium businesses, they really need the same security, if not more these days. So how can they still uh, protect their resources and their employees with something that's really easy to deploy and easy to use? And that's where companies like Timus comes into play. Uh, so firstly, Zero Trust. So Zero Trust is actually a framework uh, versus an actual solution. So Zero Trust means never trust and always verify. In the good old days, you know, when everybody used to go to the office and you have the four walls, you have your nice firewall, you put your device and based on the MAC address, right, like they make sure the, the device is only accessing what it needs to access. It was an easy world, if you will. But now with Everybody is everywhere. You're in a conference, you're in a coffee shop, you're traveling, you're in an airport lounge. And when you're accessing the company resources, it's not good enough anymore if the company is just looking at your credentials, your username, password. Dark web is full of those, these things. Even the VPNs, mm. right? The traditional VPN. Again, the VPN credentials are a dime a dozen in the dark web. And if you keep standing a multi-factor authentication, first of all, the MFA fatigue is real. People hate it after a while. Plus, nowadays, <laughs> hackers also have a way to really circumvent even the 2FA and MFA uh, rules. What Zero Trust does is it says that I'm going to make sure you are who you say you are really. And I'm going to look into many more things to confirm your identity just more than just looking at your username and password. So we look at, for example, what's your IP address? Is it a trusted IP address? What's your location? Is this a new device? Did you do an impossible travel? Like two hours ago, you were connecting from Boston and now you're in LA. Like unless, you mm. know, you lasered yourself, it's not possible, right? <laughs> so these are the some of the things a zero trust scheme looks at to make sure only the person who uh, they say they are can access. And another thing about zero trust that's also very important is, let's say, God forbid, a hacker was able to access the network. It's very segmented. So you do micro segmentation so that only uh, you act, you, you are allowed to access what you need to do your job and nothing else. Like for a developer, mm they are not supposed to access financials. You know, I'm just giving an example. So that's really the zero trust uh, philosophy. And then the secure access service edge in the small medium uh, business uh, framework, what that really means is like combining a couple of these things uh, like zero trust network access, a cloud uh, firewall, software defined uh, perimeter, uh, secure web gateway to do category filtering, you know, DNS filtering, making sure you're not getting fished while you are on the uh, internet. So it combines everything into a nice uh, framework uh, to to make it very easy to use and deploy. Wow, really compelling. And in cybersecurity, we, we've seen the rapid rise of managed service providers for many good reasons, but particularly you just can't find and hire cybersecurity talent these days or expertise. Um, so tell us about your partnerships with different MSPs and, and how you're working with them and you know what the feedback has been from those partners. Yeah, so Timos actually is a go-to-market model. We only work with our MSP and MSSP partners. We don't sell direct. And there are multiple reasons for that. Uh, so the biggest one is, uh, so, you know, the key reasons, and I'll, I'll start with the first one. In the U.S., you know, small, medium businesses, up to 90% of them use an MSP for either all of their IT or some of their IT needs, including cybersecurity. Because to your point, uh, especially cybersecurity, there's a massive labor shortage. And small, medium businesses, you know, a dentist office, for example, right, or a mm. law office, instead of hiring full-blown IT and cybersecurity teams, full-time employees, they prefer uh, to 
hire these trusted advisors and tell them, hey, I'm going to give you X amount of dollars per month for each of my employees, but you choose the vendor. You need to do what you must and uh, handle handle my stuff, right? So 90% of the uh, small, medium businesses in the US or close uh, to 90 use an MSP. Uh, so it makes really sense if you're trying to sell into, get into an SMB, you actually work with your MSP partners and, uh, and become part of their cybersecurity stack that when they are going to this MSP, uh, sorry, SMB, they actually deploy you as part of that. Uh, the other thing that's very critical for MSPs is the solutions that they choose should be really easy to use and easy to deploy. Like one thing about MSPs is, you know, they are very resource limited. They are not uh, full of people sitting around, right? And they are usually working with a lot of clients. A typical MSP has, you know, 70 clients, if not more. So your solution needs to be multi-tenant through a single pane of glass. They need to be able to deploy you to all of their clients, bring their endpoints, and they shouldn't. It shouldn't take three weeks to be able to deploy this, right? What it, mm. uh, what we take pride in is literally, and I'm not exaggerating in here. An MSP can deploy Timus to a client of them in as little as 15 minutes, and definitely less than half an hour. Wow. Well, that's pretty impressive. That's quite a mic drop. Uh, moment, and you're you're very channel centric, obviously, with an MSP yeah. strategy. Um, you care to call out any partners or customers, or what? what what's your go to market look like these days, and uh, how's it going? It's going actually really well. Thanks for asking. We just closed August, obviously, uh, so you know we just have the uh, numbers for that. Uh, we are one of the startups out there in the in hyper growth mode, and there's uh, a reason for it, uh, because there is a huge demand in the SMB uh, space for a solution like ours. You know, small, medium businesses are actually in the hackers sweet spot. Uh, hackers don't care uh, if it's an enterprise mm -hmm. or an SMB. Data is data. Mm. If anything, small, medium businesses are more vulnerable. They get 400 percent more phishing attacks uh, because they, you know, their employees have less training. The, the uh, business has uh, less resources, less tools, and even if they, they they have tools, not necessarily they have configured themselves properly, right? Uh, so hackers love small medium businesses, and especially in regulated industries like finance, uh, healthcare, manufacturing, and you know IT and business services, uh, we see a tremendous need for uh, a zero trust uh, slash SASE solution like ours. And uh, MSPs uh, love using us uh, when they go to their clients. And, and the, the best thing, Evan, is the uh, industry is just picking up. So when we are working with MSPs, it's usually that we're not replacing a competitor. It's usually a green field. Uh, MSPs are just starting to do vendor selection. And that's where uh, we come in and uh, we, you know, uh, most of the time get chosen as a selected vendor, which we are very proud of. Fantastic. You have quite a diverse global team around the world. I assume you sell and support market around the world. What are some of the differences in the different geographies and regions around the world when it comes to security? Well, uh, so the the regions that uh, we we play in, like especially in the MSB space, the needs of the MSBs are usually the same. Like in any uh, solution that mm. they are looking to provide. Uh, being multi-tenant is very important wherever you are. Uh, making sure that it's easy to use, easy to operationalize uh, is, is very important. And support is very important. You know, wherever you are, uh, being able to support your uh, partners and their clients in a way that really uh, is responsive, is solution-oriented, and with an approach partner first uh, really, really works. Oh, fantastic. And you're on the front lines, as it were, of cybersecurity. You know, so many headlines every day. Uh, what are some of the biggest threats and challenges that you see in the industry right now beyond just the headlines? What, um, what do you advise your clients to be most aware of? 
like personally, you know, I've been working in cybersecurity now, you know, six six plus years, and I've worked in multiple companies. So, you know, I, I've seen different products, different uh, threats. I really think uh, human factor is still the biggest threat to companies. Uh, and the phishing mm. attacks became so sophisticated, Evan, like it's just impossible to detect with a naked eye. Uh, what is a fake website and what is an actual website? These people became so proficient in being able to uh, trick you into getting your usernames and passwords. So credentials mean nothing. I think that's why this zero trust is incredibly important and relying on tools to protect your uh, resources instead of the uh, being on the lookout personally with your eyes and ears because it's not going to work. Like the world has become too sophisticated, unfortunately. So you have to rely on the latest and greatest cybersecurity tools to protect yourself, be it mobile security, you know, protecting your devices. Mm -hmm. It's so easy how these social engineers use urgency to trick you, right? You get an SMS message and say like, hey, we see a fraudulent alert on your Chase Bank click here to confirm. It's actually a uh, you know, phishing attack. So you click on it, last you're worried about because it looks very legitimate. So you immediately put your Chase username and password because everything looks the same, exactly the same. It looks like a Chase login. And and then, yeah, voila, like you, you, you basically, uh, they stole your uh, credentials. So stuff like this, it's so easy. So if you have a mobile security app on your device, that's automatically gonna uh, cut uh, that link, that's, you know, you'll still see the SMS message, but if you click, it's going to say that, hey, this is a phishing site, so we're not even letting you go there. I think uh, the biggest threat that I see is still the phishing, uh, smishing, all the variations of it. And now with AI, of course, deep fakes, we all are now reading news, right? Uh, people do these videos with deep fake uh, CFOs asking for bank mm. transfers. Uh, so it's getting a, you know, a tricky world out there. You need to keep relying on uh, vendors like us to uh, hopefully stay ahead of the uh, bad actors. Yeah, that would be um, a wonderful mission. As we head into uh, the busy end of year season, what are you looking forward to? There's so many events and meetings and meetups, get togethers, what's on your radar? Yeah, the uh, as we say, the event season is picking up again with the end of the summer. Uh, you know, October, November are very busy months uh, for uh, events. It's a good thing that I'm living in Miami because a lot of the events of the channel are actually in Florida. Uh, so, you know, we have uh, events in Orlando. We have events in Miami. Uh, we will personally be in Datacon. Uh, and then IT Nation in Orlando and Datacon is coming in Miami. Uh, so those are the two big events of the channel. A lot of MSPs uh, show up. But, you know, the, the events in the channel space, and especially in the MSP space, literally you can go to a different event like every day. So as a vendor, yes. you, need to be, you need to be really selective uh, and you need to make sure that you're able to reach out your uh, prospects and partners not only using events, because it's usually always also the same MSPs, you know, have the... Uh, so we try to do a mix of it, right? Of course, uh, we go to the events, but we also uh, try to educate through webinars, uh, roadshows, uh, websites, white papers, and so on. Fantastic. Well, congratulations on all the success. Really important mission. And uh, here's to your success in getting this problem under control to somewhat. Congratulations and good luck in the future. Thank you so much, Evan. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. Thanks everyone for listening.